still is shot in the, in the club in the Pulse in Orlando, and he's still in the bathroom when he's bleeding. He got shot, and nobody's going in for him. Someone with a gun walks into a public place and opens fire, killing countless innocent people. It seems we hear this story out of the US every other week. These attacks occur right across America in both cities and small towns. They take place in schools, places of worship, shopping centres or workplaces. It might not seem like there's much of a pattern between these countless shootings, but there is when it comes to the people who commit them. This is what makes a mass shooter. Well. This is my last video. It all has to come to this. The Violence Project is an initiative funded by the National Institute of Justice. It's examined data on every mass shooter in America back to 1966. It's identified four commonalities. I hate most speakers. What are you filming now? The first is early childhood trauma. Almost every shooter had been exposed to some kind of major stress early in life, as well as violence. This includes physical or sexual abuse, domestic violence, severe bullying, or the sudden and traumatic death of a parent. The second trait is that virtually every shooter had reached a crisis point in the weeks before an attack. That is, they had some kind of grievance that sparked extreme anger or despondence. Thirdly, most shooters showed an obsession with other attacks and the people behind them. They wanted validation for their plans. They thrived on the public's fear of mass shootings. And the fourth trait amongst shooters is that almost all had the means to carry out their plots. That is, they could easily buy a gun legally or could attain one illegally without much fuss. How much would you let these go for? I would we'll take for that one right there, I'd take 250 out the door. I get that one. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, do Bear Ground checks or anything on that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got cash in there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm on. The Secret Service monitors mass shootings to look for patterns, and it's found several. Firstly, shooters are likely to be male and Caucasian, and in 2018, the average age of perpetrators was 37. They're likely to have experienced some kind of recent stressor, from a job loss to a relationship breakdown. And half of the attackers had criminal histories. Two thirds of shooters in 2018 experienced some kind of mental illness, and the vast majority committed their attacks with legally obtained weapons. What's important with all of these observations, though, is to remember that on their own, they're innocuous. Obviously, not all white men in their 30s will commit shootings. Neither will all people experiencing mental health challenges. But researchers say data analysis like this allows them to identify every piece of the puzzle and then look at them together to identify a possible profile and, importantly, strategies for prevention. What we need to pay attention to the fact that this isn't just a mental health issue. He wouldn't have harmed that many students with a knife. Which brings me to one final point. There's an important commonality among almost all of the shooters, and that is that there were some warning signs before they committed their horrific crimes. Co-workers, fellow students, loved ones, and even strangers reported that in hindsight, there were some red flags. I mean, I, I had all those illusions that everything was okay because, and more than anything else, because my love was him, for him was so strong. Interpreting those in time, assessing whether there's a risk and acting accordingly could be a way of reducing the constant bloodshed.